Lesson 9 covers Gibbs free energy, which is going to be an SAT2 topic. So again, we'll be learning what Gibbs free energy is and how it relates to the earlier video. We'll be calculating what we call delta G, and we'll be looking at the Gibbs energy chart to make this complicated calculation very easy. So first off, what is Gibbs free energy? Gibbs free energy is represented as delta G, which means a change in Gibbs. So what does that mean? Well, Gibbs free energy is defined as the energy in a system or chemical reaction that is available to do useful work. So we can look at this formula, delta G is equal to the energy of the products minus the energy of the reactants. And we're trying to figure out what delta G means. Delta G means a change in the free energy, whether or not our system or chemical reaction can do a spontaneous reaction or not. The G of products represents the amount of energy our products has, and the G of reactions represents how much energy our reactants have. So can the sign of delta G determine whether a spontaneous reaction can occur? If A plus B gives you C, how can we determine if this reaction can occur spontaneously without extra energy from the outside, or if it's non-spontaneous and requires a heat change? So if we say that our delta G of any chemical reaction is a negative value, like negative 1, negative 2, etc., we can say that the forward reaction is going to be spontaneous. That means A plus B will spontaneously make you C. However, if our delta G is a positive number, like positive 1, positive 2, etc., the reverse reaction is spontaneous, which means if you look up top, C will always decompose to give you B and A. So based on the earlier slide, if you have a delta G with a negative value, which means your spontaneous reaction is occurring, you're going to be going downwards. Remember, delta G means change in energy. So if you are losing a delta G, that means you're going to be going down this red graph because as you go down the red line of this graph, you will notice you're losing that free energy, which is what a negative delta G means. If you get a delta G, which is zero, your Gibbs free energy is zero, that means you are at equilibrium, which means you have a constantly equal ratio of reactants to products. And finally, again, if you have a positive delta G, which means, again, a gaining of free energy, you're going up the red curve line. This means that the reverse reaction is going to be spontaneous. That means your products will be breaking down and reforming the original reactants. So this is the calculation for Gibbs's free energy. Delta G, or the change in free energy, is equal to the change in enthalpy, or the change in heat, minus temperature times the change in entropy. So this relationship holds true as long as the temperature and pressure remains constant during this reaction. So there are two parts. Our delta H is our enthalpy, and our T delta S is what we refer to as entropy. So enthalpy, again, is heat, Entropy is disorder, and our G, which is for Gibbs, is the reactivity or energy for making a spontaneous reaction. But also, knowing the sign, which is going to be negative or positive for enthalpy, which is easy, you can determine that right off of reference table I, or entropy, a gaining or losing of randomness, that's easy. You just have to look at the chemical reactions and see if you're making more products or making less. We can then get a sign of the delta G to determine if the forward reaction is spontaneous. So if you look at this chart, which I highly recommend you copy down because it's going to make life so much easier, is that whenever you have an exothermic reaction, a loss of heat, and you have a increase in entropy, that will be a spontaneous reaction. But if you have an exothermic reaction with a loss in entropy, you could possibly be spontaneous. The only way this reaction can be spontaneous is if the reaction occurs at a very low temperature. If you notice the endothermic reaction, which is a gaining in heat, and you're gaining entropy, you technically could be spontaneous, but you can only be spontaneous if you're at a high temperature. And if you're gaining heat and you are losing entropy, you will not be spontaneous at all. So let's try this practice problem. The equation says that solid water, which is ice, 
will phase change into liquid water. So what is the delta G, or the Gibbs free energy value, for melting of ice at 20 degrees Celsius? So let's look at this. We understand that to go from a solid to a liquid means you are endothermic, a positive delta H. You have to gain heat to become a liquid. In the process of going from a solid to a liquid, you are going to become more disordered. Your products have more motion than a solid. And finally, your temperature is going to be hot because it is above the melting point of water, which is given to you as a clue in the actual question. If we also look at this chart to the right, we notice that we have a positive delta H and we have a positive delta S. So if you had to look for something on this chart that showed positive H, that would be over here. So positive delta H means you're gaining heat. Over here, this is your positive S. Therefore, you're going to fall into this column, which means that you'll be a spontaneous reaction as long as you are high in your temperature. Being above 20 degrees Celsius means that delta G will be a negative value. That means this will be a spontaneous reaction. Now, let's actually try it with some values that I'm going to be giving you so we can actually use the formula. What is the delta G for the melting of ice at negative 10 degrees Celsius? So again, you're noticing you have solid H2O and it's phase changing into liquid H2O. So if you were to look up the value of solid water breaking down into liquid water, you would notice that your change in entropy is going to be absorbing 6.01 kilojoules per mole. If you look at the actual value, for your change in entropy, it is a 0.022 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. These values are going to be found in your blue Barron's book in the back appendix. It also says that the temperature of the ice is at negative 10 degrees. So negative 10 plus 273 tells us that we have 263 degrees Kelvin. The reason why I convert a temperature to Kelvin is because my delta S value, kilojoules per mole Kelvin, is representing the Kelvin temperature. So all what I do is I plug in the different values that are given into to me. So delta J is equal to 6.01 and now you multiply 263 by 0.022. That tells us we're subtracting 6.01 from 5.786. So in this situation you're going to notice that we have a positive value for our delta J. If you go back into your notes, what does a positive value mean? A positive value means the reverse reaction is going to be spontaneous. So if you again come up here and look at the actual formula of what's happening, you'll notice that if the reverse reaction is spontaneous, that means the liquid water is spontaneously forming a solid. And why is that occurring? Because you're at negative 10 degrees Celsius.